Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Prehistory in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons and all my channel members from our sister channel over at History in the Dark. You are the reason why this content remains not safe. Not safe at all. And today we are going to do another Top 5 Countdown, and this time we're going to reverse things. Last time we discussed many dinosaurs that would definitely, probably, be safe to pet. But this time, the professor has sent us back in time with a completely different list because apparently he thinks we're complete idiots, and to be fair, based on the way humanity tends to portray itself, that may be a fair opinion to have. And during our time travel, he has given us a list of five dinosaurs we absolutely, under no circumstances, should attempt to pet. Definitely not. And here they are. Five dinosaurs that were definitely not safe to pet. Ererosaurus ischigolastensis. This one would excite me personally at the prospect of possibly giving it a good old pat on the head, as Hererosaurus is actually one of my favorite dinosaurs. They're one of the earliest dinosaurs, coming to being in the late Triassic and dying out by the end of that era. At face value, you'd think they'd be early theropods, and for a while it was thought that was the case. Modern research involving obtaining an almost complete skeleton, as well as the skull, in 1988, found that they actually are more closely related to sauropods. They were sauricians. But that being said, they were still bipedal, and they were definitely predators. Being early dinosaurs, it's not believed they were particularly intelligent, likely operating more off of instinct. They had elongated mouths with dagger-like teeth, and claws that could easily rip your face off. They were no taller than us, but they were quite a lot longer, and, uh, yeah, seriously, the claws, we, we need to talk about that. You might argue this and say that, well, some people pet lions and tigers, and what about wolves? Yeah, well, okay, that's a big difference here, major, major difference, is that not only do those creatures dwell on the planet with us at the same time, but they're also smart enough to sometimes undergo some level of training. Wolves, in particular, when they're domesticated, start acting similarly to dogs in some ways, and they're smart enough to not only take commands, but also recognize that human beings are not food. A Herrerasaurus probably wouldn't be able to be trained in this manner, and even if it was, it's still a bit bigger than us, and if you run into one of the wild, it's probably gonna try to eat you once it figured out that you were something that it could eat. It may just attack you. You don't know. It's believed that they hunted small synapsids at the time, as dinosaurs were not the dominant species on the planet during the Triassic period meaning that Herrerasaurus probably has a decent amount of speed in its body. So running away may be a bit more difficult than you think. The point is, just don't actually attempt to pet them. Please. <coughs> Carnotaurus cestre. Known from a single, well-preserved skeleton, these late Cretaceous theropods are probably one of the most specialized dinosaurs ever. The top speed of theropods was often debated, especially in regards to T-Rex. It's believed that the Rex couldn't go faster than 20 miles per hour, which, when we compare it to a car, isn't that fast, but considering most humans can't break 10 miles per hour, I think that's not relevant to the situation, but the Carnotaurus would have been much faster than that, likely hitting at least 30 miles per hour, if not 35. They were very narrow, very sleek, and their arms were pretty much vestigial. They didn't use them at all. They had big old horns on their heads, whose function is unknown, but their mouths were full of teeth that could eat something. Like you. And you wouldn't be running away from it, because it's much faster than you. Also bigger than you. That's probably relevant too. Truth be told, the Carnotaurus is probably one of the most dangerous dinosaurs you could approach because it would easily be able to run you down far better than a lot of them. So unless you plan on getting tackled and devoured by a 1.35 metric ton, 8 meter tall bipedal carnivore, I'd say don't ever approach this creature in your time traveling. <coughs> Utah Raptor Ostromyces. It's pretty common knowledge these days that the raptors in Jurassic Park, named Velociraptor, 
are pretty inaccurate, as Velociraptor in reality was about the size of a chicken. Michael Crichton was honest in this assessment, and said that he really based the raptors off of Deinonychus, which is a close relative of Velociraptor, but he thought that Velociraptor just sounded more dramatic, so he changed the name. But even if it's Deinonychus, Deinonychus is thought to be still quite a bit smaller than the Velociraptors of Jurassic Park. However, the Utah Raptor is not that case. Utah Raptor is pretty much the spitting image of the Jurassic Park Raptors. It matches up almost perfectly in terms of size, shape, everything. The only thing that's wrong is that it's believed, although still unproven, that the Utah Raptor likely had feathers, as the vast majority of dromaeosaurs probably did. Though there is an in-canon explanation for that, and that's a flaw with the cloning technology. But in any case, the point is, the Utah Raptor is as close you're gonna get to the Jurassic Park Raptors. And if you've seen any of the Jurassic Park movies, literally any of them, you probably know why it's not a good idea to try to pet one of these creatures. I'm not talking about Blue. Blue was reared from birth by Owen and trained, and she is known to be a very special raptor in terms of the way she thinks. These would be wild creatures that would have no idea what we are, except for the fact that we're just as tall as them, but definitely not as large, and they have sharp, sharp claws and sharp teeth that they can use to tear us asunder. Now, it is believed that Utah Raptor probably wasn't as fast as a lot of the other dromaeosaurs due to their size, but their leg muscles are estimated to be very, very thick, indicating an extremely powerful kick. It's also never actually been proven that they had any pack behavior. Data gathered from their close relative, Deinonychus, showed that individuals tended to have very different diets, indicating that long-term family units were not something they did. It doesn't mean that Utah Raptor didn't do this, but it's not something that can be easily verified. But even if it is just one Utah Raptor, what are you gonna do? Do you have the physical ability to fend off a creature like this, do you? Because I'd be impressed to see it, frankly. Don't try to pet these. Ever. Not that it's gonna happen in reality, because we don't have time travel, but still, the point is, if you ever get the chance, don't actually do that. <laughs> Spinosaurus aegypticus. Oh boy, the big chungus. Spinosaurus is the largest of all known terrestrial carnivores, even trumping Tyrannosaurus, Giganotosaurus, and Carcharodontosaurus. It could have been up to 18 meters or 59 feet in length and over 20 tons. Their skulls are very long, low, and narrow, very similar to crocodilians. This indicates a more aquatic lifestyle, and they were likely more fish eaters than anything else. But if you know anything about crocodiles, you know that they absolutely do not eat just fish. And the Spinosaurus was so large that it probably could have tried to eat whatever it wanted. They likely weren't that fast on land, but if you were in the late Cretaceous in Northern Africa and had a severe lapse in judgment, maybe you decide to go for a swim and give the giant crocodile creature with the sail a big ol' hug. Do not do this. Oh, yeah, I should probably mention the reason they're called Spinosaurus is because of the giant sail on its back. The exact reason for their sail is something of a debate. Some believe it was simply display or possibly thermal regulation. Explanations vary. Their posture recently has also been something that's been hotly debated. The described new material from Spinosaurus pointed out that the hind limbs were much shorter than previously believed, and the center of mass would be located at the midpoint of the trunk region. This means that Spinosaurus would have actually been quadrupedal. News media latched onto this and said, Oh look, Spinosaurus was a quadruped, we know it for a fact now definitely, even though it was based off of one paper from a few people. Many paleontologists were skeptical of the result, as they used an extrapolation based on differently sized individuals. Further research into the matter indicates that the Spinosaurus probably wasn't completely quadrupedal, though they could have walked that way. On land, they would have amounted to more of a big duck, with a very long body, a thin tail that allowed them to swim well in the water, and a wobbly sort of posture. You might actually be able to run away from one on land, possibly, but I still wouldn't try it. Also, I can no longer look at the Spinosaurus and not imagine it making quacking noises. It really is something that I cannot get over. 
Tyrannosaurus Rex. Okay, yes, I know, this is a very, very, very basic response, and a very obvious choice for number one, but let's be fair, if I didn't, y'all would call me out on it, because I think this is one of the more obvious ones for dinosaurs you probably shouldn't attempt to even remotely get close to. The Tyrannosaurus was once thought to be the largest terrestrial predator, though as we just established, Spinosaurus trumped them a bit in size, but they were still over 12 meters in length, or 40 feet, and 14 metric tons, and the thing about the Rex, when compared to pretty much every other large theropod that trumps it in size, is the Rex was built like a tank. They were very bulky. Giganotosaurus was very streamlined, and Spinosaurus was built for a semi-aquatic lifestyle. The Tyrannosaurus was built for combat. They were built to eviscerate whatever they sunk their teeth into, and they still had the strongest bite force of any known terrestrial creature. We've established in a previous video that they were also highly intelligent, and maybe that's implying to some of you that, hey, well if they're smart, maybe they'll recognize me as not food. I would not assume this. I love the T-Rex. Would I love to pet a T-Rex? God, yes, I would love to ride a T-Rex, but the logical part of my brain is now raising alarm bells, reminding me of Tyrannosaurus behavior. Frankly, they had really bad attitudes. Not only were they very aggressive hunters, but they were aggressive with each other. They are known cannibals, willing to kill and eat their own. Some have theorized they could have exhibited pack behavior, but this is thought to be somewhat unlikely. Even if a pair did bond for mating purposes, and possibly long enough to raise their young, it probably wasn't a permanent situation, as Tyrannosaurus was thought to be fiercely territorial. As a result of this territorial behavior, it probably wouldn't have cared if it didn't know what we were, just that we were smaller than it, and it could eat us. But you might be saying, oh, I could outrun a T-Rex, no problem. Oh, no, you couldn't. The actual talk speed of a T-Rex is still kind of a debated issue among paleontologists. It was something they couldn't run, necessarily, but they were very efficient walkers with very long strides, given their longer legs. Some scientists think they could have gone up to 20 miles per hour, but on the low end, it's believed they couldn't exceed 10. But honestly, in our situation, this doesn't really matter, because the top speed for running for the average human is about 8 miles per hour. The T-Rex could outpace us. And it does sadden me. I would love to hug a T-Rex. I would name him Rage. But the fact is, that will likely never occur. Because even if I did have some access to a living T-Rex, let's be fair, it would definitely eat me. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.